All right. Uh, so for the final talk of the first session today, uh, we have Bogdan Zavella, and he's going to tell us about quantum creative reality. Okay. Thank you for uh, for the introduction and. Uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, before I started, I should say that like it's, just, it's almost the same talk as last year, so I apologize for the, the people who need to <laughs> listen to it twice, but um, uh, okay, that being said, let me start. So, uh, and before I go into concrete duality, so let me just first mention a couple of things that I like thinking or at least learning about. So I'm happy to discuss these things. And uh, that being said, let me start with uh, concrete duality. So let me start with the classical picture. So uh, we have a topological space and we have some field K, and then to this data, we can associate just usual singular homology groups. These are some K vector spaces, and uh, they kind of capture, or at least supposed to capture, uh, global behavior, global topological behavior of X. So, unless we put some assumptions on X, like these groups can be pretty like arbitrary. And uh, one of the questions that um, we are going to discuss today throughout, uh, throughout this uh, presentation is uh, like, what can you? Say about these groups if X is a complex manifold, or like later, what, what can be said about these groups if X is like has some extra structure? And so, but the first question is about just complex manifolds. And it turns out that you can say quite a lot about these groups. Uh, and, uh, but what is the most important for us is uh, point grade duality. So it says that if X is a smooth and compact uh, complex manifold, complex manifold of complex dimension D, then there is duality between HI and H2D minus I. And uh, well, this result is um, this result is a bit uh, uh, surprising from the first principles, uh, at least when you see it first time, probably because uh, smoothness is a local assumption and uh, uh, these cohomology groups are supposed to capture like some global behavior of the topological space. So uh, it, it's, um, well, at least from the first side, it's somewhat surprising that like, these local assumptions can tell you something about this global object, but it happens uh, to be the case. And uh, let me mention some immediate consequences of this result. Uh, so the first one is that, I mean, just, I mean, we have a duality of groups, so we can pass to dimensions as k vector spaces, and you have uh, equality of dimensions. So in particular, like for some, for in particular, like the immediate consequences that, I mean, your, Strands of cohomology group. Equal to H two D minus I, but two D minus I is negative in this case, and so this group is just zero. Uh, and uh, the last, uh, the last uh, consequence, maybe. The most interesting out of these ones is that uh, if you consider the top cohomology group H to D, um, then it's dual to H naught, but H naught uh, of a connected variety or sorry connected manifold is just uh, the ground field K, and moreover it's canonically uh, isomorphic to K, so you have a canonical trivialization of top cohomology group. Uh, okay, so that's some application applications of point uh, duality in, in in the classical picture now. I want to discuss uh, uh, the next example or the next instance of quantum uh, uh which happens in the algebraic world. Uh, so now we fix uh, an algebraically closed field K and an algebraic variety over K and a prime number L, which is different from the characteristic of K. And again, uh, given this data, we can uh, define the tau cohomology groups uh, with coefficients in FL and um, uh, well, whatever these objects are, they are at least FL vector spaces. And well, usually people say that the top homology groups are kind of like singular homology groups, but in algebraic geometry. But in order to make sense of this statement, you need actually to prove some results about the top homology, like and prove that they, behave, they do behave like some mostly like singular homology. And one of these results is point grade duality. And so it turns out that essentially the same statement holds in the algebraic geometry. In, uh, in, so, I mean, I need to change compact by proper, which is essentially just uh, like algebraic version of compactness. And then uh, you need to cross complex manifold and write variety. And then uh, essentially the same result holds. But now it's crucial that you consider uh, finite coefficients uh, as opposed to arbitrary field K. But module of these small things, essentially the same result holds. 
So again, all these immediate consequences that we had in topology, they also apply in the tau homology. Uh, in particular, they are concentrated in degrees from zero to two D and so on. But moreover, like it has um, arguably even more interesting applications. So if you apply it to uh, varieties over finite field, you can deduce the functional equation for theta functions, which is seems of somewhat different nature, but essentially follows from this. Uh, okay, so this is uh, for the algebraic world, and now uh, I want to discuss the periodic world. So this is what was uh, my thesis really about. And so uh, in this situation, we fix a prime number P again, and we consider the field of periodic numbers. Uh, but again, similar to the previous situation, we want to make it algebraically closed. So to do this, we first make, take its algebraic closure, but then it's not necessarily complete. So we just complete it and we call this number CP. Sorry, we call this field CP. And then uh, it's a theorem that CP is actually algebraically closed. So it's a field which is both complete and algebraically closed. So it's a chaotic analog of complex numbers. And uh, then the object of study is uh, the so-called rigid analytic variety over CP, which is, I mean, it's quite difficult to make precise what it means, but roughly it's just a manifold over periodic numbers. And then uh, by the work of Huber and Berkowitz, we can associate also tau homology groups to these spaces. And you can ask uh, whether these, these homology groups share the same nice properties as singular homology or tau homology in algebraic geometry. Um, and in particular, one gray duality holds. And so the answer is yes and no. And so first, let me first discuss the yes part and then the no part, and then again, the yes part. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first yes part is that it's a theorem of Berkowitz and Hoover uh, independently is that uh, if you, again, you choose a proper variety over proper rigid variety, it's most proper rigid variety over this field CP. And now what is important is that you take uh, this, uh, prime number L to be different from P. Then you still have essentially the same result. And, but now uh, like CP as a field itself, it's a field of characteristic zero. So motivated by the algebraic geometry, by the, by the examples in algebraic geometry, my expect that uh, you should also be allowed to put FP here, but at least their methods certainly do not work. Uh, and uh, it's restricted to this assumption, L is not equal to P. Okay. so. Uh, and finally, is the, uh, the maybe, well, the remaining question uh, in this situation is what happens if L equals P? Do we have all these nice properties and do we have uh, in particular point gray duality? Uh, so here comes the no uh, answer is that uh, many things actually do break down in, in this uh, periodic, if you consider periodic at our homology in particular kind of the main building block is false. So, like if you take uh, the unit, the closed unit disk, and it's a tau homology, then it's not contractible. In particular, the first tau homology with FP coefficients are not zero, and actually, it's they're huge. They're essentially the same cardinality as, as the ground field. So, uh, many arguments like just don't, do, like many arguments in algebraic geometry on this elliptic non Archimedean case, we do not generalize to the periodic situation. So, that's in particular, like mm, there is no version, there is no hope to have kind of like local version of one trade quality. But so now the second yes answer is that uh, Peter Schultz uh, uh, was able to show that using the perfect techniques that if X is proper, then these groups are actually are finite. And it was uh, a question like, what about one trade quality? Does it hold uh, or not in this situation where you have a Periodic manifold and FP coefficients. So that's essentially the main result of my thesis that uh, as long as X is proper uh, and smooth, uh, then you do have uh, the same concrete uh, uh, duality with FP coefficients. And here I should say that uh, the proof actually first was announced by Offer Gabber, uh, but it was never written. And like, whatever is my thesis, it was strongly motivated. Uh, by uh, his ideas, and then later it was reproven by Lucas Mann in his thesis. Uh, and um, well, um, but so one unsatisfactory part of this proof is that like it's a bit strange. So uh, 
Uh, in particular, it uses uh, PID cost theory and it actually reduces on gray duality to gross inequality in characteristic P and at least somehow from, I don't know, philosophical point of view, Hodge theory is supposed to be harder than one gray duality. Uh, so uh, it looks somewhat weird to me for, for some time. And, uh, but I think that now uh, in a work in progress with Shijan Li and Emmanuel Reineke, I think they're both in this audience, I guess, uh, that uh, uh, there is a, first of all, an easier proof of this point trade dollar. <laughs> so that's essentially the only computation that you need to do. But what's implicit here is that you need to define cycle class. So it says the traits of cycle class of point is equal to one, but also implicitly says that you need to define cycle class and trace map. But uh, once you have this, uh, everything else is kind of formal. Thank you. Uh, questions about that? What's the situation for crystalline cohomology for generic varieties? Uh, uh, well, well I, I've never thought about it. I, uh, uh, You mean it's like to define it or to put a point credibility? I think it is defined even for non smooth <laughs> but for the point Yes. So they defined, I, I, I have never thought about it. I, I think it should be possible to prove, but I didn't think about it. You are telling that one difficulty is that to discuss about the cohomology. Mm -hmm. No, <clears throat> as I understand for point duality, you don't care so much about one disk, but the uh, Projective system of smaller and smaller disk, and if you look into limit like that, is things completely wrong also, or is there some hope? So uh, for for a one, it's actually okay. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. so if you take larger disks yeah. and uh, take compactly supported homology, yeah. uh, but uh, but if you take uh, I think it's objective limit of commonly with compact support in smaller and smaller disk. So this I'm not sure. Oh, come on. Uh, so sorry, I just wanted what is, it, is there any hard theory that goes into the proof? Uh, uh, so yes and no. Oh, well, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> What, what what you need to assume is that uh, what you need to assume is that uh, homology of the of homology of proper space do not depend on, on the ground field. So once you you can prove it, it, you don't need any further input. But I don't know how to prove it without any Hodge theory. Yeah. All right, we can break for tea time then.